Hey, it's Rob. And I was at Costco earlier today. And I got some nice uh, ribeye cap steaks. Some USDA Prime ribeye cap steaks. I really like these. Um, and I'm going to set them up sous vide. And I wanted to go through the process of how I do it. Try and get a little more detailed on what's going on. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is take these out of the package. And it's pretty straightforward and simple. And one of the things I really like about the USDA Prime is the marbling that's on here. You can see the, uh, the fat that's through here. This is very flavorful and very tender. And they're actually tied together with butcher's twine. Because this is the uh, cap steak and it's two pieces that are together. So, next thing you want to do is season these. Seasonings that I like. This is a coarse smoked sea salt. Uh, you want to use coarse and you want to use sea salt or uh, at least non-iodized salt. This is a little bit different flavor of smoked salt. Uh, it's a little bit smaller uh, granules but it's still, still pretty good. Some freshly ground black pepper. Some garlic powder. And it turns out that garlic powder works better for this than fresh garlic for some reason. I'm not sure. And this is a spice blend that's uh, pretty much jalapeno and serrano that's dried. And just add a little bit of that for a kick. Press this in nice and, nice and heavy. And flip it over, do the other side. Again, press it in. And you want to be sure to get the edges too. All this in the bottom. Roll that around. Press it in hard. Ooh, be sure to keep it tied up or it's going to lose its shape when it's cooked. Uh, not necessarily a bad thing, but if you want it to look pretty. Alright, then I want to prep the vacuum bag. Now, I have this kind that uh, has the roll inside it, so you need to seal one side first. You do that by pulling it down to the ceiling, ceiling sponge, the ceiling strip here. Close it down, and you just hit manual seal. Now, your vacuum sealer might be different. Um, they're all a little bit different, but usually there's a way of doing manual seal, or you can get bags that are um, pre-sealed on one side. Now, something I should have done is set that to a double because this is uh, this has two strips in it to seal. So I'm gonna, you see it's already sealed one. I'm just going to edge it down a little bit. Do another one. Now that's got well, pretty much a triple seal at this point. <laughs> and I want to make sure that I've got a bag that's long enough for both of these pieces. So I'm going to go about there. Nice little ceiling cutter. Now, the other thing that you want to do, or I like to do, turn this first bit of the bag inside out. So what that will do is it will help keep this surface from getting anything on it that might interfere with the seal. And then you just handy dandy. Place your steak in there. 
try and do both of these in one. No, I'll just do them separately. Now, to do this, you want to set the edge down in this uh, little vacuum tray. This will keep anything that comes out of the stake. If there's any fluids or juices or anything that make it through, it will trap in here and not get into the suction system. There we go. There's one that is all set. This is going to go in the refrigerator. Probably overnight, or maybe even for a day or a couple days. What that will do is this will allow all the seasoning on the outside to work its way through the meat and get a lot more um, of the flavor into the meat itself. I like doing it this way, you don't have to, but I just like my meat to have a lot of flavor. refrigerator like I'm going to do. These could also go in the freezer. Um, they freeze really well when you take them out to thaw them. Make sure that you thaw them out in the refrigerator for at least 24 hours and it's like they're freshly packed. You can store these for quite a few months in the freezer just like this. I'm going to leave these in the fridge for a couple days. We'll go from there. But, yay! Hey, it's Rob and uh, just wanted to show you, we had a little snowstorm yesterday, or actually last night and this morning, and I figured I'd give you an idea of what the uh, what the snow looks like now. Um, so we got uh, you know, a few inches of snow. The dogs are very happy with the snow. They love playing in the snow. But um, I wanted to pick up where I left off yesterday with the, uh, the uh, ribeye cap steaks that I'm going to throw in the sous vide because it's going to take me uh, probably an hour and a half or so to uh, get rid of the snow and the sous vide time for these ribeye cap steaks is about two hours so I figured that I would start them now and I wanted to uh, show you what's going on with that. So this is, of course, the, uh, the sous vide machine. I call this the aquarium. And uh, I just filled it with water. Now, to save a little bit of time, I filled it with hot water. So we're already almost up to temperature, and I haven't even turned this on yet. So we'll turn it on, and that'll start heating up, and it'll be up to temperature very quickly. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to go get the steaks out of the refrigerator. A little flatter than they were yesterday, uh, but that's okay. They'll cook just fine the way they are. And if you'll notice, there's been a little bit of a change in color. Uh, that's because all the spices have been getting in there, all that seasoning, been getting in and changing the meat. It's changing the chemistry of it, breaking down some of the protein is making the meat even more tender. It's pretty awesome what it does, but you can see it's already up to a few degrees. So I'll drop these in and make sure that they are fully immersed, and then we're just going to let it sit for two hours. And we're right at the two hour mark. So A little 
malformed. Uh, that's okay. It's not the shape, it's the flavor. Uh, this is one of my favorite parts. The cutting open of the sous vide bag. And to pour off the juices. Wow, there's not a lot coming from this one. Goodness. This one came untied. That's okay. It'll come untied anyway. The dogs are being very healthy. Let's set that aside for now. You want to make sure to try and pat these dry because you want to get the outside as dry as you can. Otherwise it doesn't steer it doesn't sear. It ends up steaming. And we don't want that. We want a nice crust on these bad boys. Or bad girls I suppose. Um, I don't know. Steaks have a gender. I think the cows that they are or the cattle that they come from have a gender, but I I'm not sure.
So in uh, case you couldn't tell, the dogs are uh, we are being very, very healthy, but uh, no, no, no. That's the, uh, that's the steak. Doesn't that look good? It smells awesome. All right, we're gonna take it inside, do some cutting. I'm gonna start off with a small one. Nice sharp knife. <laughs> I'd say that came out pretty good. I'm getting a lot of assistance from the dogs right now. They are uh, very, very willing to be taste testers. But unbeknownst to them, I'm going to be the first taste tester. All right. Can I try it? Hmm. <laughs> it's very good. Mm. All the spices got into the meat. It's very beefy. Mm. It's got a really good flavor and it's super tender. I like this process. I'm going to have a little bit more and I'll see you guys next time. No, you're not getting any. This is for me. This is for me. This is my steak. Yeah, this is my steak. I got something else for you girls. Yeah.